Congress. Well, welcome everybody to our program. Welcome to the audience here at the Boys and Girls Club. And welcome to all of you who joined us online. Um, I'm going to have another set of introductions in a minute to introduce all these people here with us today. But I wanted to tell you that we'll be monitoring this session as it's streamed live to our audience at home. And we'll also record it for our website archive on boomersinathens.org. After the presentation today, you may have questions. And the audience here in the, the Boys and Girls Club can simply raise their hands and we'll pass you this microphone. And that's important so that the people at home and on our recording can hear you. So talk right into the microphone, if you would, please. And those of you online can ask a question on the Q&A panel. And um, what you do is you look for the Q&A sign at the top of your um, window, or there's a question mark. And then you'll find a screen, and there's a little box at the bottom of that screen, and you type your question, and then you click Send. And I'll be able to see your question, and at the appropriate time, we'll ask it for you. So thank you very much for joining us. All right, at this point, I want to uh, give the program over to Ron Weatherby, who will introduce all these distinguished athletes that we have in the front of the room. Ron? Well, hello and thank you. And actually, we, uh, before we get started on uh, introducing all our, the rest of our panel, uh, I'll leave that up to our uh, moderator, Mr. Hudson. Uh, I want to apologize for the absence of uh, Jesse Tuggle, uh, an unfortunate last-minute change of plans, so he will not be here with us today. And we will get to the, uh, the rest of the panel shortly. Uh, first, we need to take care of some business. Uh, on your seats, there is a short survey that we would like you to fill out and hand in after the event. You'll receive a small token uh, for filling that out. And uh, there will also be a short visual trivia after the event with uh, some prizes as well. So if you'll hang around for that. Uh, I would like to mention that this event is possible due to a grant from the U.S. Institute of Museum and Library Services benefiting the, uh, excuse me, Athens Regional Library System and the uh, Linden House Art Center. Uh, for more information on the grant and what it is really used for, you can go to uh, boomersinathens.org. I also want to thank the director of this grant, Madeline Darnell, and uh, she's been very instrumental in getting all of this stuff uh, pulled together. I would also like to thank the Boys and Girls Club, uh, Mark Hatchett for the use of this fine facility, as well as Derek Floyd, who's the director of operations, and especially my friend Sterling Gardner, who's here, uh, who uh, is the resource development director here and I have had the pleasure of working with him on other projects. And then, of course, our esteemed panel here, which will be moderated by another good friend of mine, Dr. Richard Hudson, who is uh, currently a faculty member at the University of Georgia, and over the years has directed many projects for the university, the Board of Regents, and in the Athens community including coordinating the university's uh, involvement in the 1996 Olympic Games and as serving as a consultant to the 2000 Sydney Olympics. He's also a member of the Slippery Rock University Sports Hall of Fame for his involvement in baseball and the uh, Mercer County, Pennsylvania Sports Hall of Fame and also received the 2010 Distinguished Alumni Award from his alma mater, Slippery Rock University. Excuse me again. Take it away, Dick. Thank you, Rondo. <clears throat> a very kind introduction. Um, I played some sports growing up, but I have with me up here today uh, three gentlemen who really excelled. They were outstanding athletes. And each of them since then, because all of us in our youth never looked ahead and thought where we would end up being one day, there's no axiom in baseball, or excuse me, in sports that says athletics builds character. We certainly believe that more so I think athletics reveals character, and that which has been revealed with these gentlemen over the years is really exemplary. So let me introduce each one of them. To my far right is James Banks. James was a graduate of Hope Smith High School in Atlanta, a school that's no longer uh, there under that name. 
uh, recruited by a number of Division I schools. He was a McDonald's All-American. He came to the university. He led the University of Georgia's 1983 to the Final Four uh, and was the MVP in the East Regional when his team, led by him, and what a leader he has been, uh, defeated Michael Jordan, uh, a name that I suspect we all know, uh, 82 to 77. In the last decade, he has been the head coach at Athens Academy here uh, in the um, Athens area. And uh, James, pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. To my immediate uh, right is Wayne Swingford. Wayne grew up in Anniston, or born in Anniston, Alabama, went to Mudford High School there, came to the University of Georgia, uh, played here uh, in the uh, early 60s, and then played three years with the uh, San Francisco 49ers, 1965, 66, and 7, with such people as John Brody and, and uh, John David Crow. Jack Christensen was the coach. He has then since returned as a carpet company here uh, and is a real leader in our community. And uh, Wayne, pleasure to have you with us too. Mm -hmm. And then to my immediate left uh, is Kent Lawrence. Kent uh, grew up uh, in the shadows of Clemson University obviously saw a different light, came here to the University of Georgia after being recruited by schools all over Tennessee, Oklahoma, and a number of schools. Uh, he came here as a running back. He was a 1967 MVP of the Cotton Bowl, uh, where he ran the ball 14 times, or 16 times, 149 yards. In the second play of the game, he ran 74 yards for a touchdown. He got a law degree after that. He was a police officer at the University of Georgia campus. He became police chief in uh, Athens, Clark County, uh, later a prosecutor, then a judge. Uh, he was named the, um, make sure I have it right here, the state, um, get the right state, the chief, chief judge for the state court of Georgia in Clark County. Uh, he also started in the year 2001 a drug DUI program that has become really a, a landmark across the uh, county, or excuse me, across the state as well as across the county, or the United States. So, gentlemen, pleasure to have you with us. And Ron, who introduced uh, all of us, uh, is uh, from New Jersey, and also is probably the epitome of someone who was involved in athletics and then volunteering. He was the volunteer of the year here in Athens one time. He's involved in all kinds of things, libraries, etc. And he was a baseball player outstanding. He had an opportunity to play professional baseball, decided to go to college. So with that, I'd like each of these uh, gentlemen to uh, start and want to just take a couple of minutes. Tell us about your earliest memories of playing sports in your hometown. Uh, James, you want to start? Yes. Um, basically, I started playing baseball first, and then I went on to football. Um, and then I chose basketball. I had great coaches uh, and, and mentors who really taught me the way of playing these sports, but also taught me great character. And we just had a wealth of competition in my area in Atlanta. So I just, I think I was very blessed to have um, good coaching, but I was very fortunate to have a um, great mom and dad uh, who um, had five sisters and two brothers. And all the house was pretty much like the boys and girls club. Everybody used to come over and play all the time. So. Um, I really enjoyed sports, but it really taught me how, how to use sports and become a um, good leader as far as mentoring um, people around me and being a leader of all those teams that I played with. Hey, I was from Alabama, I was like James. I came from a big family with seven children in our family, five boys and two girls. We moved out of the country. Nothing to do if you didn't play sports for some time. You went to the farm. So that was an easy choice for us. We always had to do some kind of sports. And I was fortunate enough to be playing one night when the Georgia Scouts were recruiters were in the area. And they asked somebody from another town to get more ball players around. They did this and they asked them to see that Swinford kid up in the month. And I said, I don't know where Swinford is or where Monkey is. <laughs> he told him how to get back and came back and started from there. So I went up to come to Georgia. And thanks to my mom and dad, they would not let us drop out of school. All of us, seven of us uh, children graduated from high school and all but one at some type of college. And uh, I got my degree from university in 1968 and coached one year of football in Georgia. And since then, I got out of football completely other than just support. And I, Encourage my two boys and have one of them is 
a pitcher, relief pitcher for the University of Georgia now. He's his sophomore is coming up. His father, so I guess he had a swinger. So uh, I encourage him to real and stay on them about sports or any and that activity just to keep them busy in this work. They turn out to be great kids. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And how about growing up in South Carolina? Well, I'm not sure that I ever really had a choice. My father played for Presbyterian in 1939 and 1940 before he went off to the war and he served uh, in the invasion of Saipan and Okinawa and returned home. I had an older brother, I have an older brother, Charles, who um, played sports, uh, was a very good football player, and, uh, played in the defensive line and offensive line both. And um, he was uh, a, also a very good baseball player. Um, Myself, uh, I had, as a child, rheumatic fever at age five, and I was bedridden for a year and was told that I would never be able to participate in sports. Um, my mom always says that um, that was the hardest year of her life because I apparently was trampoline from one bed to the other nonstop, and uh, she couldn't keep me lying down most of the day. Uh, but my mom was also a very good athlete. She was from Clinton, where my dad met my mom. Uh, mom, and he was in Bollett Presbyterian, and my mom can still contends to this day that she was the best athlete in the family. She played uh, girls basketball in high school and also ran track and was a very good athlete. So uh, then I have a young brother, Bobby, who uh, was also a good athlete, played football and baseball and some basketball. So we all just grew up in a sports family. Um, so that, uh, fortunately, there was a doctor in Clemson, the only doctor in Clemson, he was from Vidalia. Georgia, Dr. William Hunter, who was a physician, and uh, because of my, I had a, a, a heart murmur and somewhat of a defect in one of my valves, um, there was an issue about whether I would be able to play sports, and so I was taken down to Dr. Hunter, and back in those days, we were a doctor from smoke pipes, and <laughs> so he asked my parents, uh, you know, would I be able to play, and Dr. Hunter didn't really know the answer to that question at that point in time. But he said, you know, I don't know. He said, it, he's got a heart defect. But, if, you know, it could be that if he plays, it would strengthen and, and dissipate over the years. He said, the other sign is that it may not dissipate and become worse, and he could potentially die from it. And I'll never forget Dr. Hunter leaning back in his chair and taking a big puff of smoke as he was trying to think what he was going to say. He asked me, he said, Kim, what do you want to do? I said, I want to play sports. And, um, He's probably the first influence in my life when he gave me that clearance that day to begin to play sports. And he won the Jacobs, Dr. Hunter won the Jacobs blocking trophy Clemson when he was a player there. Good for him, good for you. Yeah, exactly so. Um, and we're glad that um, you're in situations. <laughs> so, yeah. Ron, how about you growing up in New Jersey? Well, actually, I, I went through high school in New Jersey and played sports, uh, you know, ran track and played football mostly in. High school, but I started uh, my sports career actually in the Boys and Girls Club in Palmetto, Florida, and uh, started with t-ball and uh, then played uh, of course flag football and uh, very little basketball. I wasn't good in basketball, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but uh, I, I did archery, did all kinds of sports back then at, at the Boys and Girls Club. They had a, a full range of activities, and uh, you know, then I just developed into uh, mostly playing. Uh, football and track in high school. Although I played baseball almost every day I could, I never played it in, uh, in high school, which was kind of odd, but uh, because I turned out to be a pretty good baseball player. <laughs> well, all these gentlemen have turned, turned out to be <clears throat> exceptional athletes. You mentioned about basketball, and James, I, I would mention to you, I played basketball in high school, uh, but back then we weren't allowed to dunk. So I never did. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> Curious because this will be viewed by, uh, by children who are so immersed in their own lives and they're 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 playing. They don't know where they stand. Uh, tell me, um, we'll start with you, uh, Wayne. When did you realize that you know I'm pretty good? I've got a special talent here. It wasn't an ego thing, but you start thinking I can, which would then sort of lead you to be a more of a leader and a star. When did you start realizing that? It was probably about the ninth grade. Uh, I knew my parents couldn't send me to college, and I would not make up my mind that I would go to college somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was going to be on a basketball scholarship for a small kind of junior college in Alabama, but Georgia came along. But uh, probably about the ninth grade. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I don't want to go to college. I don't want to be a coach for that. When you did that, you get that feeling that you, you were very special. Did you then emerge as sort of a leader? I mean, just without not having to do so, just telling people, but it just emerged and others looked at you. I think so. I think it goes with, with the territory. Mm -hmm. I think if you're a good athlete, a star on the team, cool and cool. Uh, I think they look up to you. They just they depend on you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you look because it's all about winning. You know, not all about winning, but it is winning. Is the, mm -hmm. What you strive for, and, and if they can, if you can help the whole team, you can you didn't get there, they, they appreciate it. Mm -hmm. so, I ran I, I ran in that all the way through my pro career. Yeah. If, if you're good and you can help it win, uh, and, and you're a good citizen, but, you know, you, you go along long way. Yeah, good advice. So, Ken, how about you? I mean, you you started, you were concerned about a heart murmur, but um, you have to realize you can do some things. Well, what happened was that we, we at that point in time, we had two. Uh, little league teams, football teams, uh, the mites and the, and the midgets. The mites were for third and fourth graders, and the midgets were the fifth through the eighth grade. So I played my first year on the mite team that entire year. Um, the second year, when I was playing on the mite team, I played an entire game. And my dad had just brought me back. He'd always take me up to the Coca-Cola and hot dog after I played the mite game. So it was halftime of the uh, midget game. It was one of the early games in the season. And all of a sudden I hear, I had taken my shoulder pads off the helmet and just had on my t-shirt and pads and pants. And he's calling my name and I run up and he said, put, put your shoulder pads and helmet on, you're gonna play the second half. I said, okay. So I went out and played the second half. And my brother had come home from Vietnam that time. I didn't think about this, but I scored seven touchdowns in the second half. And um, we ended up beating Seneca about 49 to 42 and they were up. 28 to 7 at halftime. That's cool. So um, I didn't realize that I was very small, but I was fast. And so I could outrun most people. And uh, so that, uh, I guess, was so incentive. But also, James, I don't know if you realize this or not, but uh, through the second uh, grade, through the 11th grade, I grew up with Pete Merrill, which is the off guard. We were guards together. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, even in high school. Yeah, so he, was a pretty good, he was a pretty good player. I've <laughs> heard of Pistol Pete. And we spent an awful lot of time when we weren't on the football. I wasn't on the football field with, at the uh, YMCA in Clemson playing basketball with Pete. Awesome. I'd only play a half day. I'd go and go to a movie and do something else. <laughs> he'd, he'd play from 8 in the morning until midnight, every day, seven days a week. Well, scoring seven touchdowns, I would like to think you, you had some sense that you, you were a bit special. Uh, and obviously, now looking back to that, which you taught Pete uh, as, as trying you know, that, that was successful too. Absolutely. So, way to go. I was just scared. Give me the ball, and I won't run. <laughs> <laughs> James, how about you? Now, where you got an You were built for basketball. Were you tall growing up? Did you? When did you start getting? I was. It was probably um, the ninth grade year. I was six two, um, coming in my ninth grade year, and I actually made the varsity. And um, I used to go play with my oldest brother. My dad actually worked at the Omni back then, and he he was superintendent maintenance and setup, and he used to get NBA balls, and I used to play in the backyard. And my oldest brother said, "Well." You can't go play with me. I said, well, this is my ball. If you guys want to play with my ball, if I want to play with my ball, I'm going. So I tag along, and he um, actually roughed me up, and I, I, I had to play with what it was, what, five, six years older than me. So I said, well, I can compete with him on the blacktop, and I don't know, I the bars for my ninth grade year. I, I thought I was pretty good, and, I, you know, I came back myself, and I could dunk the ball, and uh, I just went at it. I thought I was pretty good because I used to play these guys my age, 12 or 13, I used to kind of dominate them. So that's when I really took an interest in it. And also, my dad had a big role in that because I used to play in the backyard all the time. He built a goal, had to put up on floodlights so I could play at night. And I always tell my wife the story I used to eat my food cold because my mom used to call me in the house all the time. And we'd have a microwave. She wasn't going to warm the microwave, it wasn't around back then, I don't think. But she wasn't going to warm the stove back up again. So I right, said, so you need food cold? I said, yeah, I'm used to it. But I used to play all the time. My dad, I never forget, I was like, Dad, when, when are you going to come see me play? He said, when you get good enough. So he knew that was going to motivate me to be the best that I can be. And from that day forward, um, he, he didn't miss a game after my sophomore year. Um, I lost him to lung cancer my junior year here at Georgia. But he did get, get a chance to see me play my Alaska collegiate game when we played in Albuquerque in the Final Four. So uh, that was a uh, tremendous song. Um, one thing I recall was, uh, it was Pete's last year before he, he and his dad left Clemson to go to 
NC State. Um, we were playing Pickens High School in Pickens, and we're in the fourth quarter, and Pete fouled out with 19 points. We went into three overtimes, and I ended up with 20 points, and I never let him live it down, but I don't support him in one game. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fun. I just finished up my 10th annual um, basketball camp at Athens Academy. And um, that's one of the most uh, important trivia questions I always ask kids. Who's, who's famous, for, uh, who had a famous man called Crystal Peak? And it's amazing how some of them actually know who Crystal Peak was. Well, he's my favorite player growing up. He actually played for the Hawks, and I got a chance to see him play, and he helped me with my ball hound and stuff like that, just watching him. So he tremendous player. I still don't think he's a better ball hound around today, even in the NBA. So he, he was a pleasure to watch. Let me uh, change the subject. Let's go ahead and look at said he just scored seven touchdowns. If I was a recruiter, I'd say, go get that ball. <laughs> 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 no doubt about and it. And at one time, at one time, when uh, Georgia was recruiting Herschel Walker, and Steve Greer was hot on his trail. And so I had bumped into Steve gassing up at the gas station. I said, where are you going? He said, going down to Wrightsville to see Herschel Walker. And I said, you know, that's what I don't understand about y'all over there in Georgia. Uh, coach, he said, what's that? I said, now, I played softball for Herschel Walker three summers in a row. And I know him, his family, we were, he can go where I tell him to go. And I said, see, y'all ain't even called us. <laughs> so he said, can you buy that in a day? I said, no. So he got to tell me, he said, well, they said, he's class C ball, and he only gained 10,000. I said, I don't care what kind of ball it is. If he can run that many yards by himself, but if you got left guy to chase him, sign him. I don't get <laughs> And if he can go that many yards, he's good. Yeah, he's he's good. good. Yeah. But it's the, I found a toast day that I didn't. But if he thought about it, I'd drive 100 miles each way to this place off. I had to go and do it. Well, we're going to give you credit for bringing Herschel here. We greatly appreciate that. It's a big difference. So, uh, but, Jake, you started playing in ninth grade, right? You started uh, then. I started playing varsity. I actually started playing when I was 10, 11 years old. Yeah. Back then, everybody could play. It started it. Exactly. We started playing. Um, it was one of the one of the YMCA, one of the boys, but it was a rec center. Back then, we had a lot of recreation places that we could go play. And um, it was um, Stanton Recreation Center. And I had a coach there. I was very, very fortunate to have good coaching growing up because the competition was, it was always fierce. And if you weren't getting it done, there was always someone to step in your place. And they, that's the first thing they taught us discipline and do things the right way. And, Took our shirts in, our jerseys in. So I, I grew up around some stiff competition, but once again, you had people who really cared about us as young men and building that character around them because it was a ton of talent around. But they, they chose to take the guys who did things the right way, and yes, sir, and no, sir, and actually had a good background of doing things the right way. And each generation does this. And, and for instance, in Athens here, we have Bishop Park, named after Julius Bishop, who was a mayor of Athens at one time. We have Lay Field, named after Tommy Lay, who was a incredible director of recreation here at one time. Uh, and often, you know, children are playing on fields named after people because they have no idea who these people were. So, uh, and, and so in each of you said essentially the same thing, and parents made such a, a difference in your lives now that you've been parents or grandparents and you're doing the same kind of thing. And you've moved toward more volunteering, more uh, part of the, uh, the, the community. Ron, and you're, again, you're such an epitome of working with libraries and volunteering the Olympics and the, the Atlanta Thrashers and Hawks and, and Falcons and on and on. How did you start getting in, involved with, with volunteering things? What, what drove you? And, and I want to ask these guys about that too. Well, actually, volunteering, uh, I started when I was real young. Uh, my sisters were involved in the Head Start program in Bronx, New York, and uh, they are always looking for people to help out, just holding hands and holding ropes, keeping people together. And, uh, you know, walking through New York, it's kind of tough. So, uh, uh, you know, I was only, what, 12, 13 years old, and they, uh, you know, I was always showing up there, you know. So they asked me if I'd volunteer during the summer programs and uh, going on field trips and just helping out and keeping kids together. Uh, so that's really how I got started. Uh, then one of my sisters uh, also, who's here today, participated in the Special Olympics uh, uh, in the softball throw, so I got involved while I was in high school. Uh, and I got involved doing uh, some work through there, and it's just been going on ever since. And it's just something that, uh, once you get the bug for it, uh, you know, giving back and doing things for other people and, and just helping out, it's just, uh, 
one of those things that just uh, makes you feel good and keeps you going. And you know, I've been now volunteering in all kinds of different uh, venues, not just sports venues and uh, other things, but uh, at homeless shelters. Uh, my wife and I, uh, you know, took about six months cooking meals for the homeless for uh, for uh, six months uh, every once a week and uh, doing things like that, just giving back to the community. Uh, and of course, I've been involved with the libraries. I've been involved with, uh, you know, all kinds of things. And right now, I'm running a, a nonprofit bookstore that every penny we make goes to support the uh, Winterville Library. So, a lot of different things that I've been involved in over the years. And of course, I met you on during in the Olympics in '96. <laughs> I did a lot of stuff during that. So, well, you're one of those people that did whatever comes up, you can afford it. We greatly appreciate that. There's a, a saying, I think it's a Southern saying, that. Uh, can't uh, spread jam around without getting some on yourself. And so when you're involved in these things, it is a good feeling, and, and certainly we all realize that. Um, which is that? Was that any, tell me about something that, that you folks got involved in, how you did uh, get involved in it. You can't tell me you've done so much. Well, one of the things uh, with our five kids, we were very involved with, uh, we had two cheerleaders and three boys that uh, played sports, and uh, we, I coached the uh, basketball and um, baseball for our boys growing up and we were very active with the cheerleaders and uh, so we felt that was important to be supported. My parents were at every meet and every sporting event that I ever participated in if they could get there and uh, I remember those days when my parents would have to drive to Ole Miss or you know long distances and as soon as the game was over we'd be flying out and I'd look down and it was always the saddest feeling that I would see those headlights and know that uh, one of those cars was driving back to Clemson, South Carolina, which was going to be about an eight or ten hour drive, and I was going to be home in an hour or two. So that was always sad to me. But um, also, um, Carlene and I, my wife, Carlene, and I uh, volunteered for Coach Hopton and Suzanne Yachton for 25 years and working with their program, including keeping live scoring at the events. And, and so that was special. Suzanne, as you know, was. 110 national championships. So it was a lot of fun working with her over the years. And um, the other thing, I've, I've been very active in my church. Uh, 2001, I became a Stephen minister, which is a ministry of lay people who uh, engage with other men, men uh, uh, engage other men in uh, crisis situations. It might be uh, someone going through a divorce, or someone has been injured, or going through hospice care, and things of that type of nature. And, so Carlene and I both are Stephen ministers and we've been very active in our church and since 2001 in uh, uh, working with people who are in crisis situations and uh, it's been very meaningful to us. Well, good for you and I can't never talk before. Of course, uh, as we all know, he, he's retired. He has to retire. He's changed directions and these directions are much more ambitious than what he did even before in a great successful career. So uh, again, we commend you for, uh, for all your going to. Gentlemen, what do you I was involved with the, I uh, still am, to some extent, to the, the Little League for both my boys, they didn't play football, I played them in football, which I didn't care as long as they were involved with something, so they played uh, the baseball and soccer, and one of them is still continuing his baseball career, so we stayed involved with that, and we're still involved with the Clark Central High School, <coughs> so, so we do most of our time with baseball and soccer. Not much soccer now, because when they get a little bit older, you got to give them one of them. So they gave soccer and soccer, but still stick with baseball. Yeah. So, I was an old baseball player, and the old parts were after the baseball player. Um, I commend him for doing baseball instead of soccer, let that go. James, how about you? I do a lot of volunteer work. Um, mainly, um, I taught a year and a half at the Rutland Center, which is the Rutland Academy, and I formed a boys' group down there to where if the kids behave on Friday, I could take them to different places like the mall and um, uh, over the bus, taking the bus meal building because some of these kids didn't get a chance to see a lot of different places because they, um, they're low income and they're on the purpose. So um, just like, I think it started in the church for me, just giving back. My mom wants to be, like I said, our house was like a boys and girls club. It was always open. I mean, kids would just come in and ask for Kool-Aid and just come in the backyard because our house was open to anyone. And, from the outside, because back then that, that really went on, everybody looked out for one another on the same block. Um, but I think it just comes from my mom, and just, and just the coaching that I had to, to just give back. I think it's our civic duty to give back, because someone 
it's about that time for us to go the extra mile, give, give to us, a, whether it's open up a gym or allowing us to play on the field. So those type of things, it's just, I think it's natural, naturally comes for all of us who are sitting up here. Um, you look at Judge Lawrence, former Judge Hood, but he, he used to do a lot of stuff for the community. Everybody here that had an impact because they was taught by their parents and by their coaches to do things the right way and to give back. We don't even think about it. We just go about our business and try to help out as much as we can. And I think it starts with our parenting, it starts with church, it starts with our love for God and, and just doing things that we feel from our heart to give back to make this world a better place. We just put here for a reason. And that was a, just a small tidbit for one of the reasons that why we're here. Exactly. Uh, we all make a difference. Uh, and uh, we'd like to think we all will leave this world and make a positive difference that these gentlemen certainly are doing so. Uh, all of them mentioned their families, their, their parents and, and their children, grandchildren, etc. Uh, James, for instance, daughter is uh, going to, or she's going south of here to the uh, university next year. Uh, his son has been accepted to medical school, so he's doing some things uh, right that, that way too. So you've all volunteered, okay, and, and we talked sort of around this. What has it meant to you to, to be a volunteer uh, and giving back? I mean, because you're doing it in so many, so many kind of ways, different ways, you're there to help people, uh, and you know, I use that, that cliche phrase about spreading jam, but, but really, what's it meant to you? Hey, Ron? I'll just say that I remember uh, doing for the Special Olympics a few years ago, uh, there was this young young child that I was uh, kind of mentoring a little bit, and of course I was coaching basketball. You'd be proud to hear that, which had my limited basketball experience, but uh, it was a lot of fun. And I just remember what he could not hold the basketball. He had some motor function problems, and then I worked with him. I worked with him, and over a two-day period, he made a goal. And he just started yelling and screaming and crying and came over and gave me the biggest hug and he wouldn't let go. And he was so excited that after two days he finally scored. And it was just one of the a very touching moments for me. Just, you know, those are the kind of things that you work for that you, you really do it for. And, and that kind of feeling, it's just, uh, it was incredible. Yeah. Anybody else here? Well, in my 26 years as a trial judge, um, I saw a lot of different people and a lot of people with uh, a number of different issues in their life. Um, but I always have tried to be an encourager to others. Uh, I always, uh, every offender that ever appeared before me, I always tried to say something of a positive nature to try to encourage that person to think where they are in life. And, and I always tell as many people as I can, even in the courtroom, is that all of us are only as good as our next decision. And that decision can either be good or it can be bad. And so uh, I've always tried to, uh, myself, my, my dad was in law enforcement for almost 25 years and he had boundaries and I grew up in a family with boundaries and, and I always uh, tried to uh, be an encourager to others. I tried to be a leader to some extent uh, for uh, individuals. Um, but uh, I know that our impaired driving court program, um, I've seen more lives uh, change from addiction and sobriety than I've ever dreamt possible. And our statistics show that on a national level, we're a National Academy Court program here locally, and we've been training teams from around the country here in Athens for the last, well, since 2006. For you. What's this meant for you? Uh, children with handicaps, small children with handicaps, I my wings, my, I don't really that. If I say I can't stay around, and I was telling, was telling my wife not too long ago, that the uh, most of y'all might remember me, I know y'all were out of the heart. So when George and George's head played the Thanksgiving, Scottish Rites used to have 50, 60,000 people there for a freshman game. That's back in the 60s. When uh, freshmen couldn't play basketball, they had, they had their own schedule. But I might be the only man that got to play in the game and got to visit the hospital for those years. I coached in the game, got to visit them as a coach. I had a son that we had to listen to when he was five years old, found out he died of And his sugar was a hundred, a thousand or something. He lived that money. Had to listen to the Scottish Rites. I know the only guy that's used Scottish Rites in three different ways. He got to visit with him. And, and uh, my son is at the University of Georgia now. He's in pre, pre med. And he told me the other day, he must have off on me, he came because he knows I am. He said, Dad, I think I know what I'm going to be. He wasn't sure what. 
part of my school stuff. I swear to say this at the Cavaliers. They said we had some home for a baseball game and he said he got to it. And he and another thing he uh, when he first his first course he came at the university he didn't sign autograph for the school He didn't know he didn't know he was just a freshman and he didn't know what the process was. <laughs> if he had to go get on the bus or something. And he said that's home saying this and that place now. I'll never do it again said, the coach just kick me off the table. He's got my son. That's where I, I mean, if you can make fun of things like that. James? Well, just the love for kids. Um, we don't realize the impact that we have on, on kids and communities. Um, I think it really dawned on me my, I think it was my fifth year in France we played, and I played in this one town, town um, it was about an hour east of Luxembourg called Nancy. And me and my wife was pregnant with my daughter at the time, and we was about in the process of changing teams. And she was actually seven months pregnant, she had to get a uh, special permission from the doctor to get on the plane. But anyway, we was making a transition from that team to Khan, where we was going in the Normandy region. But upon us leaving this town, um, they knew we was signed a contract with this other team, and the team wanted to go in a different direction, and they would make some changes. Um, but the kids in that community, the flowers and the, and, and the people coming up to you crying at the center, Tell me how much you meant to the community. It was it was unbelievable the impact it had. And the same thing with teaching second through eighth grade uh, physical education class at the academy. These kids grow up in ten years from they come and tell you and tell you that one thing that you said to them made a big impact. Like uh, Mr. Lawrence just said, that changed their life. And that's when you know we get your boss and say, Wow, it's really worth what we're doing because we don't think about it. We just serve us. We just go about our business. But the impact that we have on kids' lives and making the right decisions versus the wrong decisions is. Is, is, is incredible. And just when you see them looking out and say, just um, at the end of my camp, kids come to say, thank you for a great week of camp. Also. We take it for granted sometimes because we just go about our business to try to help individuals. And, and from Monday to Friday, there had two girls in the camp, and both of the girls came up to me and said, I really enjoyed camp. I said, did you improve? They said, yeah, we improved from Monday to Friday. Now we're going to go home and do our homework. And I tell them to do their homework. So that, that just sends chills down your spine and just makes you want to give back even more. Because it's, you know Athens is such a great community. We make our home here. Now my wife is from here. My mom's from here. But there's no other place I'd rather be than Athens. And just being with um, the people around here in the community because everybody's so supportive of the same goal, and that's to make Athens be a better place than it was. So that makes it. When it's come up, somebody comes up and tells you that, that makes you think, what I'm doing is working. Absolutely. So very well said. So right and, and you do make a difference as a community you that you're here. Do you have any uh, general advice that you would offer to uh, those in the audience, those who will see this later, uh, as far as how they can get more involved? Uh, um, you know, I'm wondering if and we all believe this, I think, that the individuals and societies in large part should be judged on how they treat the innocent, the elderly, the young disabled animals, and you guys are very sensitive to those kind of things. Any advice that you would you would make as we sort of wind, uh, start moving toward the, the end of this today, and get some questions from the audience and online, any advice that you would offer to, to get involved in, in this world? Well, it's been ironic. I've been sitting here this entire time looking at this roll of tape. Uh, playing football, I had 17 fractures over the years, so uh, I'm still walking. So. I never had any major surgeries other than my elbow. I got a bone sticking out here and here when I was in third grade. But, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, I would encourage persons, whether you're involved in sports or, or other recreational activities or, or, or life sports, uh, you know, just um, so it's so important to get involved with others. You form relationships that sometimes are uh, lifetime lasting in nature. I know. In sports, uh, so I, I think Wayne would say the same thing, and James would say the same thing I'm going to say, is that we form bonds by uh, playing with other individuals that are lifelong. And uh, you know, I still see Billy Payne and all the other players that I played with uh, over the years, and I'm 65 years of age now, and uh, gosh, it seems like just yesterday we were playing. The time passes pretty quickly, and so I would encourage uh, those of you who are here, if you have children, to encourage them. and and try to be a positive role model for them so that um, they follow in your footsteps and become um, for role models for others because that's so important. I think if you just, uh, 
pick out the area that you like most and think you might enjoy working with kids. I think kids are the you know, that's, that's the future. That's our future, so you got to get them on the right road. And it's tough to stay for you. I wouldn't want to be one. I don't want to have any more. <laughs> but you know, that's the only thing that's going to come through. What, uh, what's that there today? And I tell mine all the time. I said, boy, there's a lot of stuff out there. Stuff you ought to do now. What we did when we was growing up, we'd get promoted and put in the church. But there's nothing to it. What we did. And uh, as compared to what's out there now. So. But just pick out an area that you think you might be happy in and help somebody. It doesn't have to be children. It can be old folks. It's something that makes you happy. And then you can give and, and, and start off slow. Give as much as, uh, as little as you can. If that's what you, if you can't give much, then you, you, I think you'll get a blessing out of doing that. A great point, Mrs. Smith. I think you go back, um, talk to your pastor at church, or if you have a church, just talk to someone you believe in. Just do something you enjoy. Um, just follow your heart and just pray on it, and God leads you in the right direction. Um, just it's one of those things that's just reciprocal. Once you start doing things for someone, someone starts doing things for you, you'll find your know, passion or whatever you may be doing. So it's just you have to it has to come from your heart because you always tell people all the time, you can't fool kids. You can't fool kids, they know right away what you know them or not. You have to go about your business and, and, and be really sincere about it. Yeah, you know, Shakespeare's line, uh, this is my boat to land in the sun, get true, it can't fall as day as night. This can't be a false thing, man. I know you guys all got that line. Uh, Ron, um, um, we'll just yes, uh, reiterate just everything uh, everybody here has said, that uh, just leading by example is it, the key. I mean, if you're sincere in what you do and how you live, and then how you believe. Uh, I think, you know, that sets an example for, for other people, for adults and children alike, that uh, if you live a good life and, and, and lead by example, I think that is so important. And then uh, also just being involved, you know, literally up to uh, high school sports, all the coaches I've ever had have always encouraged uh, to do more, to give back. Every coach I've ever had from, you know, this little up to this big, it's just that that was something that was emphasized in sports, the, the camaraderie, the, uh, you know, getting along with everybody else on your team, which, you know, a lot of times can be difficult if you have uh, big team sports. Uh, not everybody thinks alike, but just to encourage you to get along with everybody else and to, uh, you know, just always give back, uh, you know, the trips to the hospitals, uh, the, the other uh, things that you would do in the community. And I think that, you know, that started it all my life. I've been exposed to those kind of things and that kind of leadership. Yeah, I've been blessed to have great mentors. My my midget coach was Snag Stamson, what a name. Um, <laughs> my high school coach was Dick Singleton, and he was uh, you know he, he was a first class guy. And he he was you know just a strong encourager of athletes. Coach Dooley had a great impression on me. Uh, and I was here four years at the University of Georgia, and uh, those are the type of people that you emulate. Exactly. You know, they're so important. And uh, and now, at our age, uh, we're in a position, hopefully, that we can have some impact on other people's lives. We all up here are, are the product of a growth bar called the greatest generation, uh, and we look back and see what those folks did for us and future generations, and it's really incredible. Um, all of these folks up here have said about education. You mentioned education several times. I think it's appropriate given that uh, this uh, event is sponsored to buy the, the library and the grant and their uh, education is such a key to, to uh, all, all this sort of thing. All of us who played sports growing up never would have thought that, you know, that we would get to the age we are now. This saying goes, you can't do anything about when you were born. Um, but uh, Wayne over here, I mean, what would he give to, to return a punt or kickoff? Get it uh, down the 20-yard line for John Burry with a winning score. Or James over here to uh, play NC State one more time, you know, or, or maybe beat uh, uh, North Carolina State did before. You know. Or can have another carry or, or running that 74 yards again, uh, that sort of thing. Or, or Ron here maybe saying, you know, we'd like to take that, that baseball that scholarship. So we're really pleased to, to have each of you here. At this time, uh, we'd like to see if there are any questions uh, from the audience or online. Uh, so, we may. Madeline, uh, do you have any? Uh, uh,
much a question. But uh, being the uh, young folks that we are, uh, and we brought an amazing uh, amount of uh, experience and, and uh, good advice and, and inspiration. Uh, I don't know all of you that are hidden before, but I can do that. Uh, I just want to say thank you to, for, for what you've done and for being here and sharing. several years uh, as I was pursuing uh, my career uh, it's kind of like the you know the ladder of success uh, you start off and you finish high school you go to college you graduate from college you get a master's degree um, and then you I went far to get a law degree and and what I found was I was always challenged I was always small and I, I was always driven by a fear of failure and so I was obsessed always go to that next rung of the ladder and doing so I cheated my family for a number of years out of my presence I missed a lot of ball games at times if I was in court uh, just situations that uh, I couldn't go to every game if they were playing out of town or whatever I couldn't just say well we're going to adjourn court at two o'clock and be back tomorrow but uh, you know that's a part of you uh, balancing but it's very important uh, not only is education important but it's so important to recognize that you are a parent and that you have responsibility to your children first and foremost. And so for the last number of years, as I have gotten closer to the end of my career, I have tried to be a better father, a better husband, uh, to uh, be more attentive to my children, to spend more time with each of them. And thank goodness our last of our five children is getting married to us next Saturday, <laughs> and uh, so uh, we, we've been very blessed. That'll be all five are now married and happily married, and we'll have, we have five grandchildren now, and we have two twins on the way at the end of October, so we'll be blessed with seven grandchildren in another um, two or three months. So, uh, but it's, it's not always easy. You just have to carve out time, because that time is, uh, is very valuable, not only to us, to those people that are maybe career-driven, but it's, it's hugely important uh, to, to your children. When, uh, when I got to play a ball and I want to be a coach, I was a coach Dooley was an influence on my life at that time. I was going to coach, coach Dooley gave me an opportunity to coach at the University of Georgia. And then I found out I didn't like it. But he told me, here's what he told me. He said, Wayne, I'm going to offer you a job. So I said, a lot of kids in your position want to coach. I'm going to give you a job coaching at the end of the year. In January, we'll pay your way out to Los Angeles to the National Coaches Convention. That's where all the jobs are found in January. So uh, I coached and went out there and I went to the University of Richmond called and I went up there and visited we were going to visit four days. And it always weighed on my mind that college coaching was never gone. And I had a daughter. So I went into Coach Frank Jones's office and I told him, I said, Coach, I appreciate it. you having me up here, but I said, I'm going to go home. I don't want to coach. And he, says, and he told somebody later, so I left and went back to uh, Athens, came back to Athens and turned down the coaching job. He never really offered it to him, but I talked to a friend of mine later that uh, knew him real well. He said he wanted to hire you, but in fact, you came and told him that. So I was aware of that. I've been fortunate. And then all my little league and high school ball, both the boys, had no trouble. I included them in things I did. If they go to they won't go to ball. So that's the thing you may want to look at. Can you get your kids involved? There's something that you like and they like. And that helped a lot. Even when I established my business, 
35 years ago here in Athens. I told my wife we'd go to a retail store and I said, we're not going to work on Saturday. I'm going to leave Saturday for my boys, if I have any boys, to play ball. So if, if people come on Saturday, if you're open one Saturday and not the next Saturday, they're going to quit coming. But if they come on Saturday and close, they come the next Saturday. They say, well, it's closed on Saturday. And they'll accept that. And that's, that's worked out great for us. So that's a lot of the things you can do, but you just have to think about it. It's, but it is a problem. It could be a problem. But I was hoping enough that uh, my boys and my children were involved. So that uh, what a problem for me. I think you have to keep them involved. Um, it's like you just alluded to. Um, my wife and girl comes to all the games on the road. I don't like them come all the time, but um, I don't have to do homework or what have you. But um, keep them involved. It has to be important to you. I'm pretty sure it's important to everybody who's up here. And you make that effort. It's tough when you're know, trying to balance things out all the time. But you have to make time um, for the important moments and just the quality times. So always try to be there for Christmas, things like that. But your scheduling sometimes is fun. I permit you to be there, but when you are with the kids, and, um, and we just, I think we're all fortunate, we, we got, all of us have to have great wives. <laughs> Someone behind us because um, they have to put up with you being gone all the time and you being there. And so I think it's very important to keep them involved and have that open line of communication. And that's huge. So, and trust, and trust, and just getting up for them. So but it's, it's not easy, but it, it is tough. It has been important to you. All I thought was simply you always wanted to be involved and not missing anything, but it has been important to you. But unfortunately, sometimes you're not going to be able to be there. But I think we kind of get used to it and just allow you to be who you are and support you. Well said, gentlemen. The, um, um, all of us are, are very uh, fortunate to have the wives that we have. When I introduced my wife to one friend, uh, his friend uh, used a football phrase that said, it looks like uh, you outpunted your coverage, uh, so we'll let that go with that. Uh, so as we as we wind down here, first of all, I need more questions from the audience or online. Okay. Okay. No questions online. Okay. Okay. I'd like to one maybe a final question up here as we move uh, and then the final comments. Um, each of you mentioned you know your parents and everything. Is there one person that growing up? was really, you mentioned one, uh, that was a, a real mentor to you, and why? What did you see in that person that you said, yeah, that's, I'm gonna be like that. You, you, uh, I'll go, you can't, because you mentioned uh, the fellow, or Max, I think you said. Who? Uh, um, <laughs> is, is it Max? <laughs> you, you mentioned a fellow growing up that you looked up to. Uh, he had a lot of names that appropriate name. Well, I guess the, other than my parents, the persons that had the greatest impact on my life were my high school coach, Dick Singleton, Coach Dooley, my college coach. Uh, there were a couple other people that were influential. Dr. Hunter, was, of course, made that decision when I was in third grade to, to enable me to play sports. Um, and then um, I would say there was another person that, um, uh, Lynn Creepy Carson, who was the owner of the big concrete company there in Clemson Central Area. And he started me working when I was in eighth grade at 75 cents an hour. And uh, it was hard work from seven in the morning until seven at dark. And um, uh, it taught me a good lesson, and that was to stay in school. <laughs> I didn't want to push concrete for the rest of my life and mix concrete for the rest of my life. So uh, he was a great supporter of mine, even though he was a huge Clemson fan and wanted me to go to Clemson. Um, I, I just uh, felt comfortable coming to Athens. Um, coach Dooley was here, and as you know, Coach Russell was here, and he had a great coaching staff, and it was only 82 miles from, from Clemson to here. And once I came, uh, Athens really became a second home to me. Uh, it just was a place uh, I said, wow, why would I ever want to leave here? And, um, and I haven't contributed a lot to the community, but I've, I've tried to be committed to the community in a lot of different ways. and. Uh, I think the biggest blessing I have now is that I've had a number of people graduate from our impaired driving work program, our drug work program, and they send me a request for references for employment. And I've had an opportunity to write many, many letters uh, of reference. Uh, one young man was an African American male, uh, went to Florida and could not get admitted to the bar when he finished law school, and I wrote a letter to the Supreme Court there, which had an impact on his admission to the bar. He, today, he's a a defense attorney uh, 
I represent offenders who are charged with drug crimes. And, and there are many others. Uh, there's, there's a young man just contacted in the last two weeks. He's applying for a job with the Justice Department in Washington. And I said, sure, I'll be more than happy to be a reference for you. You've earned it. And uh, that's why I'm here, here to support you and hopefully get you employed. Well, all those comments are uh, indicative of who you are when you're saying you haven't done much. Is, uh, Extremely humble saying that you've done incredible for amounts of good work. So, anybody in particular you looked up to is that, yeah, that's wow. Other than my, my mother and dad, my parents, because they were interested in, uh, especially my mom. My dad was really working a lot, and my mom would go pick cotton and take her youngest brother to the cotton field with her, take all day, we'd get off the school bus and take it to the dog. So. And she definitely was not going to let us drop out of high school. That was the big thing, man, if you got a high school diploma. And college was just out of the possibility because she couldn't afford it. Or they couldn't afford it. So, but my mom and my dad, I, I mean, and my mom, my mom still lives. And I was just with her a couple of days ago, 95 years old, and still going strong, mm -hmm. riding around a uh, NASCAR around our little speedway, 108 miles an hour. <laughs> 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 Her side fireproof suit, and they had to raise her up and slide her through the window because they all were together, and so he was sliding down. And I said, Did you talk to Bravo? She said, No, he was driving. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's, she's still uh, in back. I mean, she's still, uh, if I, if I don't, I, it's always yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, always has been. And if Kaylee, if I forget, she said, Do what? And I said, Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, well, she's justifiably proud of you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, also, my mom and dad would definitely like to be my high school coach, Thomas Arnold. Uh, he's no longer here. I think he passed about four years ago. And the second person would definitely be Coach Durham. Uh, he coached me here from 80 um, to 84. And the last person would be uh, Bob Chambers, the headmaster at Athens Academy. Uh, all these people have been a tremendous impact on my life during those times that um, I was wavering about what I wanted to do and how I was going to go about it. And they're, they're sincere, just like Judge Warren said, that they say that some people say, well, if, you, if I can do anything for you, let me know. But these three people have always been there, and they say, if I can do anything for you, they were there always. In the tough times, in the good times, and helped shape and mold me uh, into the man that I am today, and I'm proud. And those are the people who you always got to look back and say, well, um, I'm representing them as well as myself. Yeah. Well said, well said. Well, have a thank you, gentlemen. All oh, right, I'd want to, you to have some. Well, I was in common of someone who influenced my life. Well, I'd like to have first experience. <laughs> I remember my uh, freshman football coach, Walter Higgs, said that, you know, and the team concept only works if the individual player does his part well within that team concept. And he focused on, got us to focus on our individual parts, on ourselves as individuals to make the group better. And he always emphasized that you need to do work within yourself, do everything that you can for yourself to improve, and those kind of things, and not just on the field, but it was just uh, you know as an individual uh, human being, and that's always stayed with me for you know Good advice. through my life. Yeah. Good advice, yeah. There's a there's a uh, we've all seen the uh, maybe the movie or uh, the play Camelot came from the, the T.H. White book, The Once and Future King. At the end of it, when King Arthur nearly thinks it's bad, a young boy comes to him and they're talking, and King Arthur says to him at one point, we're all but drops of sea, or drops of, of water in the sea, but some of us sparkle. These gentlemen sparkle, and they've made a difference in this, this uh, life. Uh, Madeline, uh, some closing comments. Well, I want to thank this distinguished panel of athletes. You've given us not only a lot of fun as sports fans, but you still keep giving to our community to make it such a good place to live. And we thank you all, and we thank you all for coming today to share all this. And I also wanted to thank Sterling Gardner and his friend Terrence for setting up the Boys and Girls Club for us today. And it's certainly a beautiful facility. And talk about good education. I have a feeling a lot of good education goes on here after school. Um, and thank you again, Ron Weatherby, for lining up all these distinguished sports people. And it was very interesting. Um, I want to remind the audience that we would very much like you to fill out the questionnaire. And we have one online person still with us. And I'm going to give you a poll in a few minutes to answer. And then you can send it back electronically to us. 
uh, everyone, I invite you to visit our website, boomersinathens.org. Whether you are a boomer or not, our programs are really to benefit the entire community. But there are a lot of interesting programs like this, but just all kinds of subjects, and they're all unique in that people from our community have arranged to give a program about something that interested them or some information they think might be really important for boomers to know. So check it out. Um, and also the people here today, uh, we have refreshments. So um, you can check out boomersatathens.org and maybe come to our next program. And we always have a few refreshments. So thank you again, everybody, for coming.